Uh, welcome to another edition of Osceola Chat. We are glad to be joined today by new FSU defensive coordinator Adam Fuller and also the publisher of the Osceola, Jerry Kutz. Coach Fuller, welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, thanks for being here. Coach, uh, obviously this is kind of a different time for all of us. Uh, our first question is, what are you and your family doing while you are sheltered in place? And from a personal perspective, what's been the upside for you as a father and a husband? Uh, well, what we're doing now, you know, we're, we were super fortunate about the timing. Uh, my wife, Hope, and my boys, Jack and Aiden, they moved into Tallahassee just about a month ago. So we moved into the new house and, you know, my wife got everything unpacked within about two or three days, but some things got put away a little bit differently than others. So it's given us a chance to kind of get organized in the house, um, get affiliated and familiar with the house. So that's been great. We've been doing some projects just to get things organized the way we wanted it. Um, my, bo my boys started school. Um, and obviously, the last couple weeks, specifically with this quarantine time, um, it's been great. We've, we've tried to create, um, you know, well, not create, it's happened with some family time, you know, just, you know, to be able to sit down and have certain nights um, put aside for us, whether it's just us sitting, you know, watching a show or playing board games or outside playing basketball and um, got the pool open. So we, we've just done a lot of activities. We're a kind of a homebody family as it is. Um, you know, now that Tallahassee is our home, we won't travel too far outside of this area um, other than maybe going to see family up north once in a while. So we kind of, we enjoy each other. We love being around each other. And, um, you know, we've just tried to be able to enjoy all the small things that we tend to go too fast for uh, right now. Now, what are some of y'all's, you mentioned they've been here about a month. What are some of the things that y'all are enjoying about Tallahassee right now? Well, we're enjoying each other. That's, that's the biggest thing, you know. And, you know, just we live in, we're, we live in northeast Tallahassee in a um, neighborhood. Um, and just, you know, there's certain restaurants and, and just little areas around here that we found. And there's some different sh shops and stores that Hope's been able to get around to. And, you know, just... Really, it's been our own neighborhood and getting to know the neighbors here and uh, the boys trying to establish some friendships at the schools. Uh, so, you know, just typical neighborhood type interactions and trying to get a good feel for this neighborhood. And how old are your kids, Coach? Uh, my oldest is 13 and my youngest is 10. Okay. All right. So, y'all getting close to having one in high school. Yeah, they're getting really close. So, you know, they're actually, they're on their Zoom class meetings now. <laughs> Go ahead, Jay. What are some of the things that you've been able to do uh, with your kids that you, you haven't been able to do as a coach in the past? Well, just the be honest with you, because of the way our schedule is, we have some West Coast coaches. Um, we've been – some of our staff meetings have been started at 8, and my boys are, take after their mom and dad. They get up pretty early. So just to be able to see them every morning um, as they first wake up, you know, I've never really done that until it was summer vacation. Um, to be consistently there to put them to bed at night. Um, you know, so to be the first person they see when they wake up and the last person they see when they go to bed every night has been, that in itself has been a, a success and a reward. Um, and then sometimes during a lunch hour or something, you never used to be able to just go grab them and go shoot hoops in the, in the, um, in the driveway. You know, just something as sim simple as that. Um, those two things have been really cool. And then knowing that I'm consistently going to be home at night, you, know, you can have a routine now, you know, um, you know, based on recruiting phone calls at night, you still, you're going to be home, you know, so whether it's, you know, doing a board game, uh, playing something together, doing a puzzle, we put together the, uh, the Doak Campbell Stadium uh, thousand piece puzzle the other day. So that was fun. <laughs> um, so we've kind of done one from every place we've been at. So the thing is with this quarantine, it only took us about three days to do. Usually that's a two week project, um, but we knocked it out a little bit faster than we anticipated. Are you, either one of your sons starting to push you on the basketball court? Are they getting close to where you might have to start uh, playing a little bit harder than normal? Um, a little bit. We tried to do it two on one. Their spicing has gotten a lot better. So 
uh, we might have to start involving my wife a little bit in more of a two-on-two -two game. <laughs> All right. Well, Coach, we do want to talk to you about some of us football, obviously, and then we're going to jump back to get to know you a little bit. But who are some of the people that influence your defensive philosophy? Obviously, from what we saw of uh, your defense at Memphis, uh, very aggressive. You use zone blitz, man blitz. Uh, who influenced what you do schematically, and who do you uh, emulate your defenses from? Well, um, you know, it's kind of a long answered question just because I don't, when growing up in this profession, you know, I, and this is for a lot of, whether it's fans or, or young coaches out there, you know, my high school coach got fired um, going into when I was a sophomore in high school, my college coach got let go going into my senior year. Um, my first job, um, I had to change jobs after the first year. So there's been a lot of inconsistency in my football upbringing early in my career. Um, so there was nobody really to look to. As I got going in my career, um, I came across some unbelievable mentors. And, um, you know, just from a football overall standpoint, you know, my first couple head coaches that really made an impact on me was Walt Hamline that was at Wagner College. And then from there, Dave Clawson, who's at the University of Richmond, who's now the head coach at Wake Forest. Uh, those two both offered different things, but both showed great leadership when I was a young coach. Um, defensively, you know, my closest friends usually in the profession are the ones that I bounce things off of. Um, I was super fortunate when we were at the University of Richmond. Um, Russ Huseman, who is now the head coach at the University of Richmond, was the defensive coordinator. Uh, Mike Elko, who was at Texas A&M, was on that staff. Patrick Graham, who's the defensive coordinator at the New York Giants, uh, are two of my closest friends um, in the profession. And over the years have always, you know, talked football with them. But just as a young coach, um, you know, I've always been able to try to get around to different NFL places and try to learn from the best. And just, you know, whether it was a direct relationship, I just tried to get to the places that inspired me the most and try to learn and piece together things. So I would say those are the people that have, that have um, helped me along the way the most, those four people that I indicated. And then just, it's really just like everybody would. You get around the, the most successful places in the country and you try to learn, you try and put together a grouping of things that are organized enough for your current team to learn. And it's really an ongoing process right now. Well, Coach, you, you've had 12 tour of duty workouts and three days of spring practice with your defense. What st stood out to you about your side of the ball and what excites you most about getting back out on the grass with your unit? Well, what excites me is, is just I think we've got, um, we've got a good amount of players on this side of the ball that have played a lot of football here at Florida State. Um, and so they have experience and they're older um, and all that stuff can be a benefit, you know. Um, I think we've got a good group of, of seniors that have been through it here uh, that all need to improve in certain ways. Uh, but we've got a good core of young players at each level of the defense too, a D-line, a linebacker, and in the secondary. Um, so I think there's a good mixture of veteran players that have played a lot of ACC football, and there's a good group of, of young players who maybe haven't had as much experience but have a lot of skill. Um, and I do, you just want to be able to coach them every day. And, you know, I, I feel confident that we do have a good group of talent uh, on our side of the football and skill to be able to work with. And, you know, the thing that um, makes me um, the most eager and I guess um, as we were going through those tour of duties, um, exciting um, is just their eagerness to learn, you know, and, you know, they always, they're on the edge of their seats and they want to know why and they want to know how. And uh, that's all I can ask for as a coach and we can ask for as a defensive staff. Then it's our job to fill those uh, questions with great answers and with clear and concise ways to be able to play defense. How has the communication between the staff gone now with you guys being separated and uh, are you guys still meeting on a daily basis as a defensive staff? Every, every morning and afternoon, um, and usually in the evenings too, just because of how recruiting plays into it. So, you know, Coach Norvell gave us a schedule, uh, started last week. Um, me and Kenny then took that schedule uh, and kind of adapted to our side of the football. And um, there's been certain focuses each week here and then each day. Uh, but we're together for about four, four and a half hours each day on a constant Zoom call of, you know, specific topics, whether it's 
things that I presented, whether it's things that each individual coach has presented for their experiences. And then it's been just a round table of getting all of our ideas in line and in sync with how we are telling and what we are telling our players. Uh, so listen, this is time that usually you don't have. So it's our job to make the most of that time. And um, we're trying to do that every day right now. Now, are you guys able to watch video or of practice or recruits on, on Zoom or whatever your video conference mechanism is? With the, with the defensive staff? Yes. Yes, sir. So there's a share screen feature to most of these um, apps. And so whether it's share the screen, um, so usually it would look like this, right? In the morning, uh, the night before, we'll send out a, a, a meeting alert to this is what the topics of the meeting is going to be. These are the, these are the, um, these are the cut-ups to preview. And then usually either I'm going to control the meeting or I'm going to have somebody control the topic. Okay. Um, and then it turns into whoever's going to um, lead the screen share is going to kind of lead the topic. And then, you know, so you can, you can show live video, you can show share video, you can draw. I mean, really there's, there's no difference other than a lag on the video once in a while, you know, it's really, it's just understanding of when you're home of closing your door and your commute's a lot shorter, but it's just about closing your door and, and going to work. Like you were all in a room together. Coach, what, um, as far as the coaching staff's concerned, you can do a lot of things similar to what you do as a coaching staff anyway, right? Absolutely. I think we can actually do more because that's the way I'm feeling. Like, you know, my commute's about 25 minutes. So that's 25 minutes there and back. That's an hour a day that I'm not commuting anymore. You know, so there's an hour of work right there you're hitting. Um, and just, you know, you can, you can work out here at the house in the morning or in the afternoon, however you choose to do it. You know, you constantly have your phones available, so recruiting never changes. Um, it actually is pretty efficient as far as time goes. And as long as you have a mature staff, which we obviously do, you know, it's just you set an organized schedule. And I think as long as you set an organized schedule and you keep the, the, the teachers and the staff engaged with the topics, there's no, there's no end to what you can grow from. You know, I, you know, and then it's just making sure you're setting up uh, the correct um, things with the players, you know what I mean? Because you can't have mandatory meetings with the players. So you, you really, you know, it's not like, hey, join me at this time. You're not doing that. So you're just creating constant teaching devices and then uploading them to our uh, cloud and then letting the players, you want to make it good enough so the players are going back to it, you know? So from that standpoint, it makes you a better teacher. So, Coach, I know you're very limited with what you can do with the players, so I don't want to get into a lot of that. But um, I, communicating with the players throughout the summer, I'm sure, is, uh, is important. And uh, what, are, what are two or three things that you're most concerned about for the health and well-being of your, of your players? Well, the first is them emotionally. Like we're all dealing with this thing in a certain way. Like, you know, me personally, you know, other than at night when I sit down with my wife and you actually listen to the news, you know, and she's got family up in New York city. I got family up in Boston. I mean, just, and it's affecting everybody in the nation. So like, how do you compartmentalize that? You know, it's when I shut my door and I get my staff on the thing, like I don't think about it. And when I'm recruiting, I don't think about it uh, other than in conversation. Um, but, you know, our players, I'm sure they're thinking about it. And at times I do too. So I don't want to ever minimalize what that means. So, you know, I think that's the first thing I have on my mind is our current players in the Florida State University community. Like it's impacting us all in different ways. And to understand, don't allow it to be an excuse to not improve, but definitely understand that it can affect people and being sensitive enough to that. In, in listening and in understanding you're offering support to your current players and administration and coaches. So that's the first thing, you know, it's go, 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 but there's a real life situation going on outside of our door. So I think that's my first thing that I'm always going to be aware of here. And I don't know when I'm going to stop thinking about that in regards to our players. And then second is just their well being from, you know, a division one athlete, you know, can they get done what they're trying to get done to improve their bodies from how are they eating? How are they resting? How are they working out? Um, 
So those are the biggest things, you know, um, of just talking to our players about. Coach, what's the upside with the player relationship? You know, these guys are not new to you, but they're, you know, you haven't been to war with them yet. So you, you can't go through spring practice with them, but I would imagine there's some other things happening that have value as well. I think, you know, it. I think our relationship grows when you can realize there's a phone call from me or from them and there's not always an X's and O's behind the call. Yeah. You know, and, and like I told the players when I first got here, like, don't trust me, just watch our staff work. And then at one point trust will be earned or acquired or however you want to phrase it. And I think, you know, this opportunity is probably giving us a, a good sight of that, you know, and, you know, I got a call from a player yesterday. I was walking with my wife and he FaceTimed me and, um, he had just a general question. He was in the middle of a, like kind of in the middle of a workout and it just, I have the phone and I'm like, that was a real interaction. You know, like I can picture that being an interaction with that individual player 10 years from now. And um, that's when you realize, okay, you know, there's some care on both sides going towards each other. So, and yeah. uh, relationships don't really grow until there's some, you know, so some friction too, you know? So it's all, you know, we're losing some opportunities to develop relationships in that way, but we're gaining opportunities in the same way. You know, it's just well, it's, part to, to understand as a coach and as a leader to not lose the opportunity that's presented in front of us to grow. Coach, let us, uh, we only got a couple minutes left here and we wanted to go real quick with some fun things. Uh, uh, Pat, you want to lead it? Yeah, Coach, uh, one or two of your favorite bands or musicians. Ooh. One or two. Um, let's see. I'm you can give us three. We're good. Yeah. I would say uh, Dave Matthews Band. Did you check out his concert the other night online? What's that? He had a con Verizon concert online the other night. Did you get a chance to watch that? I did not catch that. No, sir. Yeah, it's one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Yeah. And uh, I know this is going to be a little bit, but Jay-Z. All right. I like him too. Uh, who is the best college football player you've ever seen in person? Oof. I had a coach against them. You could coach, just see him. Did not. If you want to say you coached against them, that's fine. But just you've ever seen in person. Yeah, maybe maybe Cam Newton coached against them. Yeah, that year, the championship year for them. Okay. Uh, the last Netflix, Amazon show you've watched or binge watched series? Show? Criminal show. Minds. Okay, Criminal Minds. Jerry, you got one? Yeah. It, it, um, we know you love football. At what point did you know you wanted to be a football coach? I already answered that. You did? Yeah. yeah. That was earlier. <laughs> All right, roll the tape, Derek. Roll the tape. <laughs> all right, coach. <laughs> Top three favorite all-time movies. Oh, um, don't do that to me. <laughs> oh, Major League is one of them. Okay. Right. Braveheart. Great movie. Yeah, Great one. Uh, I'm going to stop it, too, because I, I don't want to say something that I regret. Okay, if you could have one of the following superpowers, superhuman strength and speed, or mind control, which one would you choose and why? Strength and speed. Okay. okay. I think that would have been good as a player, but as a coach, I think I'd want mind control. Well, I get a better chance of doing mind control with my own powers, so I figured I could steal strength and speed because I definitely don't have that, so. All right. and, so if I, I have an associate who wants me to ask this question. Yeah. If safety wasn't a concern at all, what pet would you have? Uh, <laughs> uh, Come on. A, Can you reveal your character? A gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Coach. One last question for you, at least for me. Who was your f favorite FSU football player that's n not no longer, obviously not current, but former Florida State football player? Who do you first it's think of? Not Odell Haggins. You can't say Odell. Yeah, you can't say Odell. He's on the staff. Okay. Uh, Derek Brooks. Okay. 
Coach, those we easy. appreciate your time. And yeah, those were easy questions. You guys really got to do a better job of finding some better, <laughs> more oh, I've, got, I've got a ton. We can come back in two weeks and do this again. Yeah, they, I, they, I, made I, me, they made me stop listing questions. Yeah. The, the oh, hey, questions. all right, Coach, I got, one for, I got one for you before you go. All right, if you were stuck in quarantine with any three figures from history outside of your immediate family, who would they be? Uh, Could be anybody you want. Okay. Three. Jesus Christ. Good goal. Um, oof. Bill Russell. Okay. I should go political here, shouldn't I? But. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's enough for that. <laughs> uh, my grandfather. Okay. Uh, All right. Tell me why your granddad. Uh, he was, so he was a World War II veteran. He was a Purple Heart Silver Star winner. Uh, when he got out of the service, he built his own house in the, in the city, in the town I grew up in, uh, raised six kids, um, worked an eight to five job. After the job, he would go jogging, play tennis, skiing, running, sat back down in his recliner every night, watched the Celtics, Red Sox, Bruins, just a real man's man, was honest. Everybody loved him. The way he carried himself, kept himself in great shape, enjoyed life, was very humble, um, and was also a hero. Sounds a little bit like Jesus Christ to me. Pretty good guy. Yeah, had a crew cut to the last day he lived. <laughs> Hey, uh, what do you think about Brady leaving the uh, Patriots? Yeah, okay. So I have favorite teams, right? So I'm a fan right. of the Red Sox and a fan of the Celtics, but I can't be a fan of a pro team because I have too many friends uh, in the profession. So I don't root for teams in the pros. So okay. Families, well, I, I will tell you my family's devastated. Okay. Yeah. But, now, outside of Bill Russell, who I'm assuming is your favorite Boston athlete, yeah. Who would be your second favorite athlete from one of the pro teams in Boston? Ooh, that's a, it's going to be probably – this might be surprising. Kevin Garnett or okay. probably David Ortiz. Okay, I thought you might go Yaz. Yeah, I, he's older than me. No. Yeah. But if I was going that time of period of Red Sox, I'd go Dwight Evans. That is a good one. He had a cannon for an arm. Yep. Hey, uh, Adam, uh, small hint, Dave Cowens is a subscriber of the ICO. Is he really? Yep. I have his autograph from you when I was to, like 12. You want to revisit your list? <laughs> uh, yeah, Dave Collins was one of the three people. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it, he was right after. Yeah. Yeah. He was one of the three people and uh, all the other stuff. Dave Collins, yes. So, yeah, seriously, uh, would, your, would your grandfather have had a good memory of Collins? 100%. I, I still have a vision of when I grew up. Of before the game would come on, there was always an intro to a Celtics game. And it was when he was diving on the floor, grabbing the loose ball. So I could remember that picture in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, Coach, we, we know you got some, we know you got to go. It's 115, but we certainly appreciate you joining us today and uh, look forward to sitting down with you again sometime soon. Okay, have fun with Ken. Yeah, so you guys stay safe. See you guys. Bye. Bye bye.